Alright, with the June edition of Steam Next Fest wrapping up a couple of days ago, me, Krayowitz, TSG, and Druid's Union have come together with a list of demos that you should definitely check out. If you happen to be intrigued by any of the games on this list, I'll have a link to them in the description below, as well as a link to the channels of everyone who's helped me out with this video. Alright, enough yapping, let's get into the games. Starting this list, we have Akimbot, a platformer reminiscent of stuff like Ratchet and Clank, before women ruined it, as well as Jack and Daxter, before women ruined that studio. The demo of Akimbot thrusts players into the role of Exe, a robot with about as much personality as Shadow the Hedgehog. You're a beta male, Sonic. Who is juxtaposed by his annoying sidekick whose name I forgot. The demo gameplay is pretty simple. Exe has a decent assortment of movement options as well as a sword and assault rifle to kill robots with. About halfway through the stage, Exe unlocks an option of one of four special weapons. Each of these function uniquely from one another and require energy to be used. Almost everything about the demo was pretty solid, aside from the melee combat. This is because enemies don't get staggered by melee attacks, so they can shoot the player in the robo dick in mid-combo. Other than that one issue, I think the game is one to keep an eye on, especially if you're a fan of platformers. Hello, my name is Krayowitz, and I am a man with many ideas and absolutely zero motivation. Uh, the first game I'm going to be talking about today is Metal Slug Tactics. So if you know anything about the classic Metal Slug series, you know that it is not a tactics game. It is not a tactics series, it is a side-scrolling running gun series. things is not like the other um so when i saw that they were doing a tactics game uh i i was skeptical at best and kind of like mm, uh, very uh, kind of a little negative um on the, the lowest end but uh i will say after playing the demo this is actually a really fun tactics game uh, and one of the things that I love about it is it can, has all of the original styled sprites. It's, uh, like the entire game is in sprite work, so it's got all the beautiful sprite work that you'd expect from the game. Character portraits and stuff are done with um, traditional art, but it looks really good. But the sprite work in the game is awesome. The environments, the enemies, the characters, and the music's great. The sound design's really good. And the gameplay itself is obviously a t it's a tile-based tactics game but less like advanced wars and like fire emblem and a little more like final fantasy tactics so there are like uh you know you could be on different floors and things like that there is like ter different terrain there's interactables there's destructible objects and there's cover um it's very very cool and one of the little systems that i like in the game is something called sync which allows you like one operative if you're about to attack an enemy and another of your your characters is in line of sight of that enemy and could hit them with their primary they will also attack and do like additional damage at the same time it's a very cool little tactics game and i'm excited for what it to release um and i definitely recommend uh trying it out ah ha ha hey it's your boy uh skinny penis back at it again with another next fest got some bangers coming up for y'all <laughs> I can't. It's a me, TSG. What a video this will be. Damn, I should write that down. <clears throat> tavern Talk is a D&D inspired visual novel where you play as an innkeep doing regular tavern things. Get to know a wide variety of fantasy characters and recommend quests all while serving them their favorite drinks. There isn't much I can really say thanks to this being a text-based game, but take it from a guy who doesn't normally play visual novels, I'm buying this on launch. The cast was unique and endearing, the art was beautiful, and the fantasy world building pulled me in like no other game has in a long time. I might even use some ideas for inspiration, boom, or replicating one of the mixed drinks. What gameplay there is mostly consists of listening to your customers and mixing a drink based off of which of the five stats they need the most. This process was pretty simple, having you just drag the appropriate amounts of each liquid into a glass and serve. There was no time limit and you even had a pet dragon to eat all of your failures. God, that would be nice. Depending on what you serve them, they might have a different outcome to tell you about the next time you see them. The demo was very short, but I enjoyed every minute and look forward to seeing the full cast. 
Hopefully more drinks and slight gameplay changes are added because as nice as the core formula is, I can see it losing some traction if player involvement isn't emphasized just a bit more. Footnote to this, Tavern Talk planned release was June 20th, so by the time this video came out, it's probably already out. Go download it. Greetings people, Druids Union here, and one of the demos I will be showing off today is I Am Your Beast by Strange Scaffold. We follow the story of an Agent Harding that seems to be hiding from the government or the CIA alternative in a secluded forest fighting the scariest of enemies, the British. The game has a very well handled intro tutorial and after that the game jumps straight into things by giving us a level based gameplay loop similar to Hotline Miami with quick weapon swapping and throwing, but in first person. There are Metal Gear style cutscenes in between missions too, with some fantastic beats and voice acting. I can see this game being really popular with speedrunners due to the rating system after each level and general gameplay pace. For the short time I had in the demo I felt like I was floundering around a bit, but I can see the combat loop being super satisfying to master, and overall I'm quite interested in the future of I Am Your Beast. My only real feedback is the perch mechanic seems underutilized in the demo and healing up felt a little bit clumsy. In Mirage Feather, you play as a lolly who can fly and shoot an assortment of weapons. Players will need to manage alternating weapons to build their overdrive bar. The overdrive bar allows for increased killing power as well as longevity in the form of refreshing health upon air quotes death. The demo states that it drops players off a bit into the story mode with little to no narrative. Why can lollies fly? I don't know. Why can little girls blow up multiple F-15 eagles in a single jaunt through the sky? Hell if I know. All I know is that the game is super fast paced and I'm not really good at it. What? No, 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 no. Yet it still is a really fun game to play. Most folks will see this and think Star Fox on the SNES, but if I had to give a more accurate comparison, I'd say Mirage Feathers looks closer to something like Space Harrier or Burning Force. Give it a look if you like shmups, pixel art, or lollies. I won't judge you. I am always judging you. Now for the face hand demo. I don't have a ton to say about it other than it overall being quite solid. Face Hand is an auto battler deck builder by Fool's Dream. Basically, imagine Super Auto Pets if it was good. Oh! This game has a super weird aesthetic with it using emojis for the cards, which set me off at first, but its overall gameplay was quite well handled. Just in the demo, there is a good amount of build variety. I'm pretty sure it's endless. It's neat to see just how far you could stretch your current build to get some nice big numbers. I'm hoping to see new cards and modifiers in the full game, it would also be nice to see the enemy encounters become more interesting. Currently they're just a large block of health with the occasional minor modifier. Sworn 100% is Hades from Wish, uh, which technically isn't a bad thing, it's not a, it's not a bad idea, but that is probably the best, like, 10 word, like, like response review I could give you of what the game feels like. It's you know it's got like a a dark like kind of like a dark horse comic book vibe of like its art style, which isn't bad, but it's just kind of it's it's okay. The combat itself feels all right. It doesn't feel as good as Hades does. And the music itself sounds kind of like a like 2003 alt, alt rock sort of stuff. Like if it was a mix between like Godsmack and Tool. Like if it was the year 2003. Um, it's not bad. It's um, it's just it's a it's a mood. Uh, the combat's okay, but it's straight up, it's like if you were playing like a twin stick shooter, but if it was melee only. There are multiple characters and stuff like that, which is a cool little mix up, but the whole thing is going into rooms, killing enemies, you know, and once you kill the enemies, you get a blessing from a god or like a reward, and you move on to the next room until you get to a boss, rinse and repeat. The uh, one big standout thing, though, is that it is multiplayer. Which is cool, because Hades is a great game, and being able to play that game with multiple people would be pretty cool. And I think that is a very uh, fun aspect of this. But uh, it's just one of those things where you just kind of wish it was actually just Hades. <laughs> it, it's cool for what it is. I, um, if you want more Hades-style games, 
uh, go ahead and check it out, especially because you can play with friends to unlock new characters and stuff like that. There's progression and everything like that. But it's... But it ain't Hades. <laughs> I would take a more serious tone to match the vibe of this game, but this is the Nihilistic Nerd Channel, so you're getting the same old facetiousness. The Altars is basically Passengers meets Martian, where you play as Jan Dolsky, the sole survivor of a landing that went a little oopsie. Clearly not trained for this shit, you manage to contact someone through the static where they tell you the sun will rise in 10 days. When it does, the entire planet will be exposed to astronomical levels of radiation. While hunting for resources, you come across Rapidium, the material this crew was sent to retrieve in the first place. Finally having the attention of the bigwigs and your key out of this mess, you use the self-replicating properties of Rapidium to make a different version of yourself with the help of the quantum computer on board. If you've ever thought back into your past and wondered things like, that was terrible, what if I didn't have Taco Bell last night, or what if my dad never left to go get milk? Well that's what happens! A new you spawns in with backstory choices the first Yawn never made. This leads to tense relationships but new specialities in gameplay. Oh, right, the gameplay. Taking a pretty standard approach to survival games with some elements of base building, you'll be managing Yan, 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 and Yan. Wait. What the fuck did you drug me with, man? You'll be managing multiple versions of yourself to help you survive. Interact and brighten their mood to help them come to terms with their existentialism and find a way off of this hellhole. Overall, I love the deep storytelling and beautiful atmosphere this game has, but I'd really wish it were easier to run. While recording at the same time, I had to drop the quality to low, use DLSS, and cap my frame rate at 75 just to get something smooth for this video. Of course, optimization comes with time, so definitely keep this game on your radar. Okay, next game we're going to be doing here is Once Human. If you don't know what this is, it is a open world survival crafting MMO uh, third person shooter, like looter shooter but it is actually kind of based in like horror, which is a fun spin, but not like typical, like old school 80s movie horror. It's actually more of like online creepypasta stuff. So like Siren Head, back rooms and things like that. Those types of monsters and certain, which is uh, very, very interesting. Uh, the game kind of takes place in like two separate realities there's like the rift space which is like a very idyllic like paradise that's not real and then reality which is where everything horror is and there's some interesting stuff going on in it you know what the hell is this everything that you get in the survival crafting is here you're crafting guns you're crafting your weapons you're crafting your food shelter you know there's there's hunger being thirsty, managing your sanity, all that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of quality of life things, so it's not managing all this stuff isn't really a problem. And it's nice because if you have it like tapped out, you actually get a buff. The uh, the melee combat actually feels pretty solid. It does definitely feels reactive on the gunplay, so it doesn't feel like you're waiting for the server tick or whatever to have the enemy die in front of you, like you're playing Fallout 76 or something. There are still some bugs, obviously. The game's uh, in a rough shape, even in the demo, but uh, it's free and it's actually pretty fun. The graphics, like especially the lighting system, is pretty good. Uh, exploring stuff is fun. Building a base is actually kind of cool. It's not as like kind of horrible as you would expect it to be. And as far as I know, it's actually free, which is going to be pretty cool. I would definitely say if you're looking for this kind of experience, definitely check it out. If you're tired of open world survival crafting stuff, Skip it. What is a Nintendo fan's favorite thing to do? If you answered playing Nintendo games, you're surprisingly wrong. They actually prefer to complain about what Nintendo is or isn't doing. And something Nintendo isn't doing is making another F-Zero game. But you know who are? Indie devs. Allow me to introduce you to ROGPX, an anti-gravity racer inspired by the F-Zero series. No longer can Nintendo fans cry about not having a game like F-Zero, because this game is basically F-Zero. The demo features a Grand Prix mode, single race, practice mode, five courses, and ten racers. The graphics are super stylized, if not a bit simplistic, but overall I find the presentation to be just fine. The only thing I'm worried about with this one is the lack of an online multiplayer. 
Who knows, maybe that'll change. Either way, if you're looking for a fun anti-gravity racer, this is definitely one I would suggest checking out.